Chapter 18, Hands Up Alka and Ron, determined as ever, insisted on entering the bungalow to assess the situation firsthand before taking action. After some deliberation, Inspector Shoaib agreed, ceding control of the operation to Mr. Aga. It was crucial to evacuate the nearby residents discreetly, ensuring the criminals couldn't escape amid chaos. Aga Imran carefully selected the best trained police officers and led the charge into the bungalow. Inside, chaos unfolded. Gunshots merged with the canine barks until Aga Imran's men swiftly subdued the security personnel, rendering them powerless. The guard dogs, too, were silenced by silent bullets. Taking stock of the situation, Aga Imran realized the gravity of the ongoing meeting in the Grand Hall. These malevolent individuals were gleefully endorsing a plan to annihilate the nation, their sinister smiles betraying their malicious intent. Aga Imran briefed Inspector Shoaib about the virus, admitting he had underestimated its potency, it was more like a malignant tumor than a minor ailment. The urgency of the situation necessitated swift action. Aga Imran ordered Inspector Shoaib to have their forces encircle the bungalow with a staggered entry approach to ensure no terrorists could escape. He emphasized the importance of placing key officers near the main gate. Aga Imran then directed his team to meticulously search every room within the ominous palace in their quest to find Zishan. As the officers fanned out, Aga Imran continued to coordinate, gradually wresting control from the security personnel monitoring the bungalow. His men secured the perimeter around the Grand Hall. Inside, an eerie silence blanketed the bungalow, with no shots fired. Suddenly, an ill-advised move led to a burst of gunfire from one corner, jolting everyone present. A panicked police officer rushed to report that one of their own had been killed, and the criminals had become aware of their presence. With no time to waste, Aga Imran signaled for his police force to storm the Grand Hall. They converged from all entrances, instantly shattering the once jovial atmosphere into chilling silence. In a commanding voice, Aga Imran ordered all individuals inside to raise their hands. A shot rang out as one of the criminals defied Aga Imran's orders. Aga returned fire, sparking an exchange of bullets. The defiant assailant fell, but Mr. Aga, too, was wounded. Undeterred, Mr. Aga Imran stood resolutely, his voice laced with dread as he addressed the criminal with cat-like eyes, blonde hair, and sharp teeth. Aga Imran I told you not to obstruct us, he declared. The ominous figure retorted, questioning Aga Imran's unwavering commitment, suggesting it was the love for his son that had drawn him their midst. He claimed to possess Zishan, insinuating that a mere gesture could end his life. Leave secretly while you still can, he advised. You know that a transmitter has been hidden inside your son's body. Yes, I know, replied Aga Imran. We also knew that you knew and that's why you used to talk to your son by writing on paper, but you probably don't know that a part of this capsule is also a powerful time bomb. And if I just press a button, after exactly five minutes, your son will be blown away. Not only your son, but also around will suffer a lot. Aga Imran felt as if the bullet had hit him not in his arm but in his heart. 